Basically, um, today I'm going to talk about Calyptra, which is a chip science project, and uh, it's an open source security uh, root of trust uh, that we are also trying to build with open source tools as much as we can. Uh, I'm from AntMicro, which has been mentioned already, uh, so very quickly, uh, we're a long-time FOSSI supporter, as well as a founding member of the RISC Foundation, a platinum member of Chips Alliance, and generally speaking, we try to uh, you know, build things with open source tools, software, hardware, uh, silicon, when we can. Uh, we try to give people the capability to be fully vertically integrated, to be in control of what they're building, uh, to choose what they need to select the tools that they like to work with, and we try to integrate things together as much as we can. Um, so we offer engineering services uh, in this field, uh, and uh, yeah, chip science is one of the fields that we're pretty active in. Um, now, Calyptra is one of the uh, very big projects uh, that are part of Chips Alliance. Uh, as I said, it's a sort of trust block, and the interesting thing about it is that it's a collaboration between four big companies and a lot more. Uh, so there's NVIDIA, Google, Microsoft, and AMD. Uh, originally, the project comes from OCP, so the Open Compute Project, but um, they decided that the code, the implementation of Calyptra, would actually be donated to Chips Alliance because they trusted us to do a good job with hosting code, maintaining it, making it you know, alive and... Uh, vibrant. Uh, so um, basically, Calyptra is a pretty focused project. It's trying to deliver on the promise of a root of trust that's shared between multiple parties. Uh, by default, it's meant to be integrated into a bigger SOC, uh, but it actually has two variants. Um, they're called boot media integrated and boot media dependent. Don't ask me why. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, it's the Veer EL2 core, uh, formerly Swerve, if someone remembers those. Um, together with a bunch of peripherals. And many of these peripherals are actually um, uh, derived from OpenTitan. They're, they're kind of borrowed from OpenTitan. Now, the status of Calyptra is that it's, it's a pretty fast-moving project, actually. It's, it's, so I talked about Calyptra like early in this year and so on, and every time I talk about it, like a lot of stuff happens. It's a really fast-moving project, but it's trying to move fast and not break too many things, because it's a security project, right? So testing is an important aspect which I'll cover later in the presentation. Uh, so we're com coming toward a 1.0 RTL release, which is great. We're not really delayed in any way. And we're focusing on a pretty small but useful first version. So it's, it's not spectacular, right? It's uh, meant to be pragmatic. Uh, but the cool thing is that this is slated to be included in some real-world implementations. Uh, not in the near future, right? It takes a long time for these giants to actually build and ship silicon. But nevertheless, it's, uh, it's, it's really, I mean, everyone's serious about it. To explain a little bit like how it works and why the product came to be, uh, here you have a bunch of players involved. And you can see like most of them are really big names in the server space, you know, machine learning and so on. And they all need a root of trust, right? They're building servers. They need lots and lots of devices integrated in those servers. And typically, each and every of those components solves security in a different way. Uh, they need that to be standardized because they need to reason about security in a structured way. And when they find you know, a security bug, they want this bug to be kind of one bug <laughs> per whole server rack and not like 25 different bugs across like 50 different devices they're working with. So they really want to standardize the security aspect of things. So Ant Micro has been involved in this project in this capacity of enabling open source collaboration, of introducing open source tools, improving testing, and so on. So we've been focusing on, uh, first of all, Navier Core. Uh, we've taken up the maintainership, and we're trying to you know, make it clean and nice and, and working for Calyptra. Uh, and also, of course, like one other goal that we have, given who we are, is making sure that the project uses as many open source tools as it can, it, it's collaborative, uh, it presents results to people and helps people get onboarded quickly, because that's what we do. So uh, yeah, we're trying to kind of uh, enable a wider collaboration around Calyptra in the future. Veer is a family, of course, for those who are not familiar. Again, formerly Swerve, there's three variants that are open source. Uh, they're called EL2, EH1, EH2. EL2, uh, uh, so the second generation low power variant, is the one that's being used by Calyptra. 
They're implementing the system Verilog, and uh, it is ASIC-proven IP. It has been shipped by Western Digital in, in millions of units of different devices, so uh, it is production grade, definitely. But of course, like we're trying to reuse it in yet another capacity, so we need to make sure it continues to work, so to say. Um, so we're using a bunch of tools. One of them is variable. Variable has been mentioned in Carl's talk, so I won't dwell on it. It's, uh, of course, a system variable linter, formatted indexer, and so on. Uh, the important thing is it's actually being used. <laughs> it's not just like a tool uh, that's out there. I, I'm actually, uh, I went to DAC uh, the other day, and I was just like, right next to us, there was a booth, and I'm talking to the guy, and like, oh, what are you using here? Oh, that's variable, of course. Uh, so it's pretty popular, and right now it's also being used in Calyptra, helping enforce you know, the same standards for coding. Uh, we even have it implemented in GitHub Actions. As Carl said, we have this standardized GitHub Action that helps you just lint and format the code properly. You can get nice feedback in the pull requests. And in fact, they're all turned on for the VRL2 repository. Hopefully, we can turn them on for the whole of Calypso in the future. Now, um, of course, another important aspect of the project is helping improve the testing situation of VR mm, and Calypso in general. Uh, basically, Veer was open sourced, except it was open sourced with system level tests only. Uh, you know probably how verification works. A lot of it is very proprietary, using proprietary tools. The test benches are very seldom open. Uh, so that was the case here. Uh, the, the actual system verilog UVM test benches were never published. So now we're trying to kind of get back to it and actually create that test coverage. And uh, we've been adding public CI that helps kind of generate those dashboards and uh, yeah, in increase coverage and uh, show it to the world. So uh, we have a bunch of different tests that we're running. We have RISC-5DV, we have risk -off, and of course, just UVM uh, tests. And this is all driven by a continuous integration flow that builds a nice dashboard for you. Uh, some other things that we're involved with uh, are related more to functionality. Again, we're not trying to really change too much in Veer, but uh, there are a few things that the project does need. And PMP is one of them. Originally, PMP and Veer is kind of lame. It doesn't do much, but uh, we wanted to have it uh, standardized and using the real like RISC-V implementation uh, uh, that you know is just supported in software and uh, generally uh, everyone understands how it works. I want, since I don't have enough time, I don't think I'll walk you through what PMP does. I mean, probably many of you know this. Uh, but generally speaking, that's one of the tasks that's being uh, right now uh, performed. And of course, like together with PMP, we have to actually test whether our implementation is actually correct. We've also been working with stuff like JTAG integration, so just for enabling kind of simple uh, work with the core and the ability to uh, you know program binaries and so on. Uh, and through adding more testing in the SOC, we actually found some bugs. We helped fix them, so uh, it turned out to be a pretty useful activity uh, to get involved in that part. Now, coming back a little bit to testing and verification, uh, we're trying to use open source as much as we can, right? Uh, the one challenge is that, uh, given that uh, most of these companies involved are, you know, UVM and system Verilog shops, that particular thing is not yet supported in open source. With an asterisk, of course, come visit the talk tomorrow and hear about us trying to actually make it supported. But before that happens, uh, of course, we had to do something. And uh, uh, basically, we've uh, gra gravitated towards CocoTB and PyUVM, which is kind of, you know, UVM style, but it's Python. Uh, so uh, basically, mm, that's what we've been using for implementing the tests so far. And, and this way, of course, we could run the tests in open source CI. We've also been working with RISC-IV DV. Uh, Carl's already mentioned the framework, uh, but this slide talks more about its practical use. So uh, basically, mm, RISC-IV DV has uh, several front ends, actually. The main one is UVM based, so again, not runnable in open source. But there's another one based in Python, and the Python based one is actually completely possible to run. Um, so uh, we had to kind of implement a bunch of things to actually make those two frameworks work together, and we had to fix support for the Python-based generator, uh, and voila, we have public-facing CI, both in Veer, which tests Veer against RISC-V-DV in the Python flavor, and also in RISC-V-DV, that takes Veer and kind of verifies that the whole flow works, right? Because the challenge with risk dv is we also kind of took up the maintenance of this project. The challenge was that it used to have some 
proprietary tests that just exploded and were unfixable, right? Because with closed source, it's kind of hard to do that. Now we have open source tests, and we're going to improve them to uh, be better. Yeah, Calyptra also does a lot of work on firmware. Um, and this work has a number of cool tools that are being used. Uh, one is a Rust-based uh, simulator. It's an interpreter for RISC-V, 32-bit, with peripherals. And you can run the entire test suite on it. You can run production-grade firmware in the simulator. And you can also run it from uh, the IDE, like VS Code. Uh, it's a pretty cool. I don't have a demo. Uh, Tor from Google had a demo last uh, summit. But uh, you have to believe me that it's pretty cool. Um, it also runs Verilator, but of course, as you know, Verilator is kind of a bit slower. Uh, so it takes hours to run the test. So it's only used for some very important tests that run nightly. And for daily development is the Rust simulator that's being used. Um, yeah. And then we also have infrastructure for running Calyptra on an FPGA. The default target is the Ultrascale Plus, the ZCU-104. Uh, we have tests running on the uh, Linux on the core uh, Cortex A53, uh, and those tests are actually pretty cool because they're both fast, they're accurate, but unfortunately they're not they're not yet fully featured. So and also they take a long time to compile. I mean, not compile really, but to, the bitstream takes a long time to to generate. So uh, it's not ideal, but it's a good platform as well. One other thing that we were involved with uh, is uh, getting the design through Open Road, of course. Uh, and uh, here, because again, this is all a system verlog effort, uh, we're trying to actually get this uh, uh, system verlog plugin that Carol mentioned to uh, parse the entire design and to run it through the open source tools, which is not trivial because we have to fix some gaps uh, in the elaboration of the design and so on, but generally speaking, uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to put in more time into this in the coming months. Uh, we're also using the, gut, the GitHub runners there. Uh, so Carl told you about this kind of great system where you can just use GitHub, but also use your own machines or machines in GCP. Uh, so we're actually using this here. And, uh, uh, this is, in fact, really necessary because, of course, um, we're using open source tools as much as we can, except that we do have to use some proprietary tools for some things. Uh, this allows us to do that. We can only expose the results or perhaps like expose some results publicly, some results exposed to project partners. And this GitHub custom runner infrastructure allows us to kind of differentiate between, you know, where do the results go? Because, of course, in, in default GitHub, you don't have a lot of control. But if you take those custom runners, you suddenly have a lot of control over what machines run, how they do it, where do the results go, and so on. And those runners actually give us some nice information. We have this tool called Sargraph, which is integrated, and it provides nice diagrams like CPU usage and RAM usage. And you can clearly see that, oh, your run is just like stalling. You know, it's using one core, and it's not really multi-core, or it's consuming you know, lots of RAM, or it's consuming very little RAM, and you're just kind of using a cannon to shoot on a sparrow, right? So there's, there's plenty of information you can get out of Sargraph here, and we're using it on a daily basis to make sure that our CIs don't blow up, because they're typically pretty big. If you want to learn more, uh, Carl already invited you to the Chips Alliance event, which I can just kind of renew that invitation. But I can also add that there's a specifically like a calyptra focused uh, uh, thing at OCP. There's five talks on Calyptra uh, at the o Open, so Open Compute Project Global Summit uh, next month. So if you happen to be there or if you want to go there, uh, I encourage you to seek out one of the five Calyptra talks and just learn more about the nitty-gritty details of that project. And that's it for me. Beer time, right? <laughs> Amazing.